Well, hello everybody, and welcome to Mapping in the Wild, how we got two new mappers up to speed. My name is Hans van der Marl, I'm the owner of Red Geographics, and we're the, uh, the Dutch representative of Avenza and Safe Software. Uh, we have been so for a, a long time, I've been using my publisher for 26 years by now. Um, and apart from selling and supporting the software, we also do GIS and cartography projects on the side, and basically just any kind of fun stuff we want to do. And I'm going to talk to you about a project we recently did, um, and this is a little bit of a, a, a different kind of presentation, I guess. This is more of a success story, because I'm going to talk to you about how we got a workflow together for Safari Bookings, the largest online marketplace for African safaris, to, um, to basically allow them to produce maps for their website. If you want to take a safari in Africa, go visit safaribookings.com. Um, the estimate is that they needed about 200 to 250 maps, so it's quite a big, uh, quite a big project, basically. Now the way this went is um, is pretty normal for us. We um, in this case we got word of the project through a friend, um, David. If you're watching, thank you very much. <laughs> um, we got in touch with them. We talked about their requirements. Based on those requirements, we came up with a plan, we developed a workflow, and we delivered a training. And the total runtime of the entire project, so from the very first contact to us delivering the whole workflow and training, it took less than a month. <coughs> so the clients specifically for this project were two people from Safari Booking. They had no background in JS or cartography but they did have some experience with Adobe software, Photoshop mainly, and, and graphic design in general. Um, they were both based in South Africa, even though Safari Booking is headquartered in the Netherlands, so, so both the trainees were in South Africa. Um, and I think most important is that they were dedicated and eager to learn, so they really wanted to get going with this. And you know, training enthusiastic people is always a good thing. The tools that we use for this project, now of course my publisher within Adobe Illustrator, we used Natural Earth and OpenStreetMap data. Uh, for OpenStreetMap we got the free shapefile downloads that you can get from Geofabrik, the, uh, the German organization. And the clients had supplied us with a very detailed uh, style guide, a very well thought out, nicely documented guide on how the maps should look, which is really awesome to work with. The maps they had to be tiny, um, 335 by 280 pixels. It's probably some of the smallest maps I've ever worked on. Um, they needed to be saved as PNGs or SVGs for online use, and they had identified six different kinds of maps that we had to produce. So there were either country maps or specific park maps or POIs within the greater city area or a city map or a city map if the city is on the coast. and island maps as well. Um, obviously they would only cover the countries where Safari Booking is actually offering safaris. But for example they include the Comoros. And actually this is one of the maps, the map of Kenya is one of the maps that was produced by the trainees after we, uh, we finished the project. So the process that we used, um, first we looked at the requirements, we looked at all of the conversations we had with them and the style guide, and based on that we developed a concept of the workflow for one of the six kinds of maps that they wanted to produce. Specifically, we looked at the country maps, so it would be the outline of a specific country with some major cities, major roads, and also the major national parks, because obviously those are the destinations that you would have if you go on a safari, you go to the big national parks. Now what we did is we took our existing my publisher training course and we cut that down to a smaller section which was heavily focused on using the data that we were going to use for the project so using natural earth and open stream of data and we cut it up into four sessions of about three hours each which since our trainees were located in south africa and i'm located in the netherlands we delivered them online uh, on consecutive days. So basically Monday through Thursday in one specific week, half day training. And we 
really focus the training on that workflow. So rather than giving them a generic map publisher training, we gave them a very specific training for the kind of maps that they wanted to produce. As we were delivering that, we of course discussed this with the trainees and we came up with different ways of doing certain things. So if we came up with one of those things, we at that moment we decided to make changes to the workflow and we made sure we made those uh, decisions on what to change, we made them together. So we were adapting the workflow as we were moving along to the wishes of our clients during the training sessions. Every training session we recorded and we shared recordings with them afterwards along with the instructions. So they always had something to fall back on. Um, you know, double check again, how did you do something within the publisher? Now naturally we had some challenges. Um, the data, uh, natural earth data is great for like country maps, but um, it only contains national parks for the United States. And all of the trips that Safari Booking is offering are in Africa. OpenStreetMap does contain all of the parks, or at least from as you know as, as much as I can gather. Um, but they don't always end up in the shapefile exports. There's something going on on the processing side and it means that not every park actually shows up in the shapefile. So for the ones that are missing, um, we made the decision to either add them manually to the maps if, if it's not too much work, or we can get them through the Overpass Turbo API using FME. Um, basically we said to them, if, if you can see the park on the OpenStreetMap website, there has to be a way to get it into my publisher without having to redraw it manually. And naturally, there's also uh, a challenging learning curve. Um, for somebody who has no background whatsoever in GIS or cartography, to go from zero to producing the kind of maps that you've just seen within a single month is, is a pretty tall order. Uh, but my hat is off to my trainees because they were really awesome, they were really dedicated to the task, and they really, really wanted to learn this. In fact, uh, apart from those half-day sessions that we offered, um, every other part of the day, part of the workday, they continue to practice what we just taught them in the morning, they continue to practice in the afternoon. And they were eager to look for ways to you know, solve the issues themselves. So the results, um, less than a month after starting the project, the customers were making maps on their own. Um, the maps conform to their style guide, they look great. And they're now also considering of um, producing more detailed park maps as well. And you know, they have the GPS traces of like the park entrances and the, the routes that they take. So they, they have access to a lot of the data already. So um, this is the next step for them, producing more detailed park maps. And we're, uh, we're quite curious to see what, uh, what they can come up with next. So thank you very much for your time. If you want to reach us, you can find us on uh, online, Red Tube Graphics on all social media, or email me directly, hans at redtubegraphics.com. Thank you very much.